So the title of my talk is on the genetic differences across the globe for psoriasis. So let's see. Um, we're all, you're all very familiar with psoriasis. You know it's a worldwide problem. Um, in effect, of, of, of at least 125 million people worldwide. Um, but it's interesting to kind of look at the incidence of it across the globe. And what you can appreciate is that in the um, here up in the northern European part, you can see very high incidence of psoriasis. And then the, uh, the European uh, diaspora that kind of uh, migrated to Australia, New Zealand, and maybe to some extent to South America, kind of took psoriasis with them. But there is these regions across the globe where the incidence actually is, is much, much lower, including uh, Central America and also here in, in Southeast East Asia. Uh, and in that context, it's actually quite interesting to kind of speculate and think about you know, the genetics of psoriasis. You know, as we all know, the appearance of psoriasis is, is, is highly modified by the, uh, the color of the skin. And that's just shown over here in these images. You can see here in Caucasian skin and, and kind of darker toned skin, African American, you get more of that kind of a silvery scale. And then in, in Asian populations. Um, but it's not just the skin color that kind of modifies the biology and the presentation of the disease. There's a lot of other components, including inflammatory mediated uh, processes that actually play a role. Um, and if you look at the pathogenesis of psoriasis, I, I know this is a bit of a complex slide that I have over here. Um, but it, what, what it really shows is that there are different things that are kind of involved in, in psoriasis pathogenesis. There, you have to have predisposing factors, uh, the environmental, and, and you have to have the necessary uh, predisposing genotype to be at risk of getting psoriasis. Um, and then you have a disease initiation, then disease maintenance. But what you really need, you need the right trigger at the right time to really set off the psoriasis process. And whether that's in the skin or in the tonsils, like shown over here, you get activation in the skin of plasma cytoid dendritic cells through cellular stress, and activation of dermo dermal dendritic cells at home into the skin during lymph node, and through IL-12 and IL-23, critical and, and central key mechanisms in, in, in psoriasis pathogenesis, you get activation of Th1 and Th17 cells that can home back into the skin. And the same process can likely occur in the tonsils following a streptococcal throat infection. But once these cells kind of gain entry into the skin, they release pro-inflammatory mediators such as TNF and IL-17, you get activation of the keratinocyte, the epithelium, and that in turn initiate and sets of a vicious cycle that kind of maintains the inflammatory process in psoriasis and brings in a lot of different and additional inflammatory cell subsets. What's interesting, if you look at the genetic predisposition of the 86 genetic loci that we have identified to date, they actually align into very specific biological processes. And that includes anti anti interferon antiviral signaling. You can see the risk genes here in the box, epidermal differentiation, autoinflammatory responses, TH17 differentiation and IL-17 responses, antigen processing and presentation, oxidative responses, TNF and a couple B signaling, IL-23 signaling, and T cell development. But you can appreciate the diversity of the biological processes that are really involved in, in psoriasis predisposition. There are obviously some central inflammatory pathways that are involved, such as IL-17 and IL-23 signaling, but you can also appreciate that these processes are not limited to just one cell type or one tissue. It's a truly a multicellular disease process. So what about psoriasis, the genetics? So this shows you a typical kind of Manhattan plot from, the, from psoriasis genetics. You can see the, uh, the different peaks here shown in both blue and, and, and red. The red was supposed to show the new peaks that was in this publication that we made in Nature Communication in 2017. And then this threshold over here is the genome-wide significance threshold. But you can appreciate that there's a lot of different genetic loci that predispose to psoriasis. And the one, the big one that is kind of going outside the map uh, is the MHC class one region. We have the, uh, the HLA uh, genotypes. Um, HLA system, particularly the MHC class one, actually is quite complex. Um, this just shows you the four major and, and most common HLA uh, type one, both HLA uh, A, O2, HLA-A24, HLA-B51, and HLA-B07, but you can really appreciate the, uh, the difference in the incidence and the frequency of these alleles in different populations of the world. When we think about psoriasis MHC, we really think about HLA-CW6 as being the major 
genetic risk factor in the MHC class region. And this kind of shows you, this is from uh, the allele frequency, this is uh, online where you can actually look up the frequency of these different HLA alleles. And really shows you that we see quite a lot of it here in the northern European part, um, and to some extent down here in Australia. But there are populations where the MHC and HLA C26 uh, incidence actually is quite low, and that includes uh, Central America, and here particularly in Southeast Asia. And we're kind of a bit limited in terms of what data is available in terms of addressing, you know, what are the differences or similarities between these different MHC class one. And this is a, a, a study on uh, patients of South Asian ancestry and then the, the, the European ancestry. What I want to highlight is that obviously there's a big difference in the power between these two studies. One of them has 16,000 cases, whereas the other one only has about 2,600 cases. And that affects the overall uh, p-value that we're looking at. But what you can see, if when you look at the, um, uh, the MHC region, it's actually strikingly similar. You're seeing the same peak, really. Uh, HLC 6 here in the South Asian ancestry, and this is the same SNP that kind of aligns with HLC 6 the peak is exactly the same. And if you look at this kind of a distribution of the, uh, the, the genetic risk, this is what we call like a haplotype map. The shape of it actually is quite and strikingly similar. So again, just tells you how much and how well conserved this risk is in this, this particular region. And it's across different ethnic groups. Also, if you look at the, uh, the different peaks, so there are multiple signals in the MHC region in, in psoriasis. The top one is the one that I show over here, and that's the same in both uh, Southeast Asian and, and European. The order kind of uh, shifts a little bit in terms of the second, third, fourth, and fifth most prominent peak for the genetics. Um, but they're in different orders, but, it, but it's the same peak. So again, the composition, when you look at the MHC class one region, it's very similar across the populations that we have actually looked at, and it's highly conserved. The order of the, uh, the, uh, the, the risk might be a little bit different from one population to the next, but in, in, in overall is actually highly similar. So what about the, uh, all the other genetic loads that are not in the MHC class one region? I think this is kind of a, a one way to kind of look at it. We're kind of using the data from the two most powerful genetic studies that have been done, that's in the uh, European population, and then the other one is in the, uh, the Chinese population. And what we have here is 86 genetic risk loads that are predisposed to psoriasis. You can see there's obviously a lot more, on more of them on the Caucasian side, and the reason for that is that there's more samples, there are more patients, we're more power to kind of detect them. Um, but you can see that even in the smaller, uh, let me see, go back, sorry go back, you can see that there's a lot of loci here in the Chinese population, at least 23 of them that are only found in the Chinese population, and about 10 that actually overlap between the both. And I find it's, it's kind of interesting and intriguing to kind of look at what is the one that kind of we see ac across these fairly divergent populations. So one of them is, is the ones that are kind of shared, the 10 genetic risk loci. And if you look at what really is, is kind of coming out very prominently as the shared biological processes between different ethnic groups. So it's antigen presentation, interferon signaling, L17 pathway that is really kind of coming out, and epidermal function. This is kind of the core unit that really seems to kind of tie together psoriasis across different ethnic groups. If we look at the ones that we have so far only identified in the Chinese population, and again, keep in mind that the, the uh, Caucasian studies are much more powered, and we're really not picking these variants there y yet. It could be that we're not just powering them right. We need more patients to really pick them up. But at least we can say that these variants and these particular risk loads I pray a more prominent role in uh, the, uh, the Chinese uh, psoriasis group. So what we're seeing is, again, epidermal function is coming up a little bit different than what we see in Caucasians. Innate immune defenses of the, defenses of the skin, uh, R33 signaling, and then T cell, B cell signaling that are kind of coming up. Um, so again, kind of quite similar, but if we kind of look at it across the different uh, groups, and again, there's obviously a lot of gaps in the data. We don't really know yet if, if this really holds up, but at least based on the limited data that we have, the pathways that are really kind of shared across the different ethnic groups include MHC class one, antigen presentation and processing. And, and kind of indicating that psoriasis is an autoimmune-related process. That's what kind of crosses, goes across all different groups. 
There's also a very strong IL-23, IL-17 driven inflammatory response. So that kind of is the, the key and central immunological pathway involved in psoriasis. And then also antiviral and interferon responses. And then uh, epidermal responses, proliferation, differentiation clearly plays a major role in psoriasis across the globe. But there are also some interesting things that kind of seem to separate the two, and that includes IL-31 signaling, which is a risk factor for psoriasis. IL-33 signaling, which seems to be more on the, uh, the, the Chinese side. And then T-cell, B-cell processes. So there's some very interesting biology and biological differences there that we just haven't really explored yet. So what's the, uh, what are the implications of the genetics of psoriasis? So one of them is uh, what we have done in, uh, uh, in Michigan is to kind of look at it in, in, in the two racial groups that we have access to. And that is uh, uh, Caucasians and, 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 and African Americans. What you can appreciate over here, this is the odds ratio. And we're kind of looking at mild to severe psoriasis or psoriatic disease. You can see age is really not making a major impact on the severity of psoriasis. Male sex actually does to some extent. Uh, income um, does affect the severity of psoriasis. Maybe uh, the disparities that we have all talked about do really play a role. But if you look at the African American, it really actually uh, pushes you towards or pushes them towards more severe disease. And if you look at it in terms of the PASI score, you can see the African Americans tend to have a higher score than Caucasians, and also in, the, in, the, in terms of the body area that is affected. So again, they're really a biological, and, and biologically and, and treatment relevant differences between these different groups. And this kind of comes down to the genetics. We're seeing differences in, in risk carriers between African Americans and, and Caucasians in terms of, here I'm showing two uh, risk genes involved in NF-CAP B signaling. If we look at, and this is looking at the response downstream of TNF and IL-17, the genes that these pro-inflammatory cytokines turn on, you're seeing here for the Caucasian individuals, and here you have it for African-American individuals. And if it was exactly the same, it would align on the, uh, the median curve that you can see kind of going across. But you can really appreciate that many of these genes are kind of showing skewed response towards being more amplified in African-American population. And if we look at it as a whole down here, you can really appreciate the shift in the red curve towards increase compared to the blue one. So again, we're really seeing an increased inflammatory response in certain ethnic groups, and that is relevant to the, uh, the risk genes involving uh, NF-kappa B signaling pathways. Another thing that I also want to highlight is, is in terms of the clinical trials that we have. Uh, this actually shows you the uh, composition is, is three clinical trials, uh, all on biologic and psoriasis, etanercept, uh, ustekinumab, secukinumab, and here also we have guzulcumab. And what I want to highlight is, is that if you think about what we know about the, the racial diversity and, 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 and differences between different racial groups in terms of the clinical trials, uh, the great majority of these people in these clinical trials are all Caucasian, uh, about 70 to 90 percent, depending on which trials you actually look at. So really what we know about the biological response in psoriasis is in the white population in Caucasian. So there's really obviously a, a major gap there. And this is one of the reasons why these real world data, the patient registries play such a critical role. Another thing that I, I kind of want to highlight also just for interest sake, it's also very skewed towards males. Um, and again, clearly we need to do better. The other thing that I also want to kind of touch upon is the polygenetic risk score. Uh, this is some, something that is the field is kind of moving forward and towards. And it's kind of using all that genetic information that we have on these patients and try to kind of use that information to stratify our, our patients into low risk and, and, and then high risk. And I think this is going to play a major role in terms of how we approach patients and kind of go and move towards personalized care and select treatments in the, in, the, in the future. But if you look at what, are the, what is the information that we use to really do these calculations and predict these scores, and it's entirely and overwhelmingly uh, European-based genetic information. It's getting better, you can see that here, but it's still the slope of, of, of this is much slower than what we have here, here for the European population. So clearly, another aspect that we need to do and improve greatly on. So just to kind of quickly summarize, so uh, I hope I've shown you that the genetic architecture of psoriasis is complex and incompletely understood, and there clearly is a need for larger and more diverse genetic studies. 
Um, each psoriasis patient carries a unique mixture of different risk alleles. Um, and this, the, the, the uh, frequency of these risk alleles differ between different ethnic groups. The types of risk alleles and the type of risk genes also differ between different ethnic groups. And they're likely to contribute to the molecular and clinical heterogeneity of the disease. And then also may contribute to variability in the treatment response. And again, these are aspects that we just don't know. And then uh, I would say that future studies are needed to uh, help address this. We need larger and expanded multi-ethnic multi GWAS studies to facilitate polygenetic risk score. And these will really factor in, in uh, that will really factor in the racial background to kind of really predict the risk and also how we approach and treat our patients. So that concludes my talk and I'm, I'm happy to take questions. Thank you. Uh, lectures. I'm Lian Dasun from China. Actually, focus on the genetic study of psoriasis, and uh, some work uh, you presented in China is done by our group. Yeah. As well, you I know, there are various genetic variations in the human uh, genetic database, and uh, traditionally, the, the current GBA study mainly uh, try to identify the sensitivity gene by SNP variation. Yeah. Actually, there are many other variations. Uh, genetic variation in the human uh, genome database, such as insertion, copy net variation, structure variation, and the protein uh, truncated variations. Do you try to use other uh, genetic biomarker to identify the uh, SBG for psoriasis? Actually, a group have been performed the genetic study use the uh, various genetic uh, biomarker and identified many other. Uh, new novel set between for psoriasis. Do you try to uh, perform the, uh, this study in European population? Yeah, so we're, we're working on an expanded GWAS study. So soon the, uh, the number of genetic loci are going to go up to like 170 from 86. So it's going to be a big jump. And again, the more information that we have, you know, the, the more we can tell about what's going on and what's driving it, and also these kind of ethnic similarities or ethnic differences. Obviously, there's, even with that, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done, including fine mapping the genetic risk closer, because again, it's just a marker for the, uh, the locus. We really do not know what the true SNP in that particular region is for most of these. Okay, actually, uh, I had uh, identified many more novel susceptible gene by use the structural variation and uh, uh, insertion and the deletions and the copy of variations. Yeah, I think I've seen some of your papers. I, it, we did not, I did not include them in, in, in this slide, not yet. Okay, you mean interesting. But we, we, have not, we have not yet addressed that in the uh, Caucasian population, but it's something we are going to be looking at. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Please, Yeah, uh, thank you, Johan. I mean, you, say, you make a lot of very good points here. I think it is you know, certainly what you see in, in the real world registers um, backs up what you're saying, is that you know, certainly in, the ba in bad beer, the response to biologics in South Asians is... Um, not as not as good as we see in the white Caucasian population. Yeah. Um, we certainly looking at adalimumab levels in the blood, you know, which is now becoming increasingly important. I think to measure um, levels of biologics in the blood, you know, it, they are different. It's a different um, uh, narrow range in in the UK in Afro Caribbeans than in white Caucasians. So again, it's different dosing may be required. And also, I think we may be different. You know, you talk about skin of, you know, the skin of color, which is so important. It's not just, it's, and I think you alluded to it. It's not just the, the color of the lesions. Actually, I think the distribution and the pattern of the of the lesions as well is going to be different. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't hear any thoughts on that. No, I, I agree with you. It's not just the modif, you know, that the, the uh, color of the skin is the modifier. It it, it is truly is a biological difference. And again, it's it's both in the difference frequency of the uh, the risk alleles that, that these patients carry, and then also they may carry different alleles. Um, and I think our understanding of that, you know, those processes we just we don't have it yet. Uh, but I think that should be a priority over the next five, ten, fifteen years to kind of understand that better, because I think that's really going to help us to kind of take the field all the way in terms of treating patients, you know, to the same level no matter where they actually live. Yeah, and then just one sort of minor point, I guess, is that is that uh, you have 125 million people 
in the world have psoriasis. Well, it's actually less than that. It's about six. It's about sixty million. <laughs> Is it, uh, Went too high? <laughs> yes. Yeah, too high. Yes, too high, yeah. way too high. <laughs> it's very low in our side of the world. And yeah. it's really interesting to see um, the CW6 is uh, quite similar for the South Asian. Yeah. And this could explain why we see more South Asian with uh, psoriasis in my multi-ethnic uh, population. Yeah. It's much less in Chinese and Malay. Okay. Yeah, so it's all very interesting. Thank you so much no, for you. enlightening thought. Let's thank you. <laughs>